Hey, how you doing? My name is Emmy Quaker, and welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. Emmy Quaker, welcome to the Sarah O'Connell Show. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm thrilled to have you on my show today. I've just seen Moonfall. I love it. You play Doug Davidson. Can you tell me how you first heard about the movie and got involved with it? Was there any kind of audition process? Yeah, uh, I actually sent out a tape through my reps in the month of March of 2020. So really like right when the pandemic started, I didn't hear anything. Um, And then all of a sudden I get a call November of 2020. So what is that, eight months around? Around eight months. And they said, hey, um, you remember that Moonfall movie that you sent a tape for like months back? I was like, yeah, I was like, Roland Emmerich. Holly Berry, all that stuff. I'm like, yeah, 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 totally. What's up? And they're like, oh, yeah, they want you for the role of Doug Davidson. I was like, oh, all right. And it was crazy because Roland Emmerich, and I've I've just been such a fan of, and the reason why I'm even in this industry is because of movies like his. Like, I literally have posters on my wall with, like, Will Smith and Independence Day and, like, I Am Legend, like, all of these types of movies. So when I got the call to work with Roland Emmerich and this team of actors that I've been, you know, Someone watching since I was a kid, it was it was a no brainer. How long did the filming take place? Was it as he affected by the pandemic, or was it on closed sets and you could get through all the scenes without much interruption? Um, well, it was. It's tough because I had, I had, I had to quarantine for two weeks before filming. Right. And then after that, I did filming and then left. And then we had, and then I, uh, we went on a break after that. So in regards to the whole, I forgot what the whole process was. I think, I don't know if it was like around three months of filming in total. Um, but my part was, you know, part within that three months. But, you know, with COVID, we did have, of course, we had like the dividers in between cast and crew. We had, of course, the COVID testing and all that other stuff. And and also, it was also just super cold. <laughs> when I was like, <laughs> would I go outside really? No, I hate snow and I was not out, so, but... A lot of the cast that, you know, that in the film, I'm still in contact with today. That's amazing. And so you play the chief of staff of the Air Force. What do you love about that character? I just love the fact that he is able to be this, like, A-type personality. And mm. the fact that the entire movie is trying to play catch-up. And he's trying to play catch-up with his uh, strange wife, which is Halle Berry's character, and... Uh, my son uh, Zane um, in the film that he's always trying to establish a relationship but because he's put work so much on the front and he's playing catch up and and I just really loved that element of the story for him and I felt that was a huge grounding element for me uh, in filming and in, in the process. Yeah, one thing I loved about the movie was as cataclysmic as the event is, you really get to know this core group of characters and get to care about them. And your character in particular is in a difficult situation because you're trying to deal with the situation, but also to keep your family safe and you've got all that going on at the same time. Yeah, that's, without giving anything away, it's like, yeah, he he has a decision that he has to make. But at the same time, that decision doesn't only affect the rest of the world but it also could affect his family um and exactly and with that it's you know what does he care about and where does he put his trust you previously worked with Halle Berry in Extant and was it fun to reunite with her albeit as your estranged wife in Moonfall (laughs) yeah I I worked with her what was it like six years ago and and I just I have so much respect for her because she is one of the nicest people and I'm not like probably the nicest person I've met on set in this industry. And she's just so welcoming and so warm and especially just uh, being able to meet with her again. Like that's like the first thing that that, that we kind of had a conversation about. So um, she's just, yeah, she's just a dream to, to work with and not only her, but just the entire team. Now, of course, because there's an apocalypse, you have to make a lot of really important phone calls. I must say, I was very jealous of your character because I think if I was in that situation with my phone, it would have been plugged in the entire time, but yours kept going the entire movie, which was amazing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's literally, you know, his phone, I'll just say his phone is his, like, supporting cast in a, in a certain type of way in this in this movie. It uh, really is. And, <laughs> it is, and it's, like, and it's glued. And I think that's what I thought was really fascinating is, 
he's trapped in this space and this phone is his contact to the outside world. And he's not able to really see that as much. Um, so really playing in that space was, was a lot of fun and it was actually a, a welcoming challenge to play. So obviously a lot of those scenes take place in remote separate locations. Were there any times where you were actually speaking to the other performers on the other end or did you have their performance to work from or did you have someone else reading their lines to you while you were performing it? I was all, I had a reader. Um, the, the good thing is that Roland and uh, the team and Harold, they actually set up, um, I set up a Zoom call with uh, Zane, uh, my son in the film. Yeah. He was able to have like a two to three hour conversation um, with him. And also, uh, the thing that helped with me with Hallie is also I've just known her work from before. So I kind of had a blueprint where I could start. But then the day before, like her last day, and technically like my kind of first day, I was able to like read off of her for her scenes. So it was really cool in having that to establish this character because one of the things that you needed to see, I felt, was you needed to see why they're no longer together. Mm. And that was a huge element that, I, that you needed, I felt was important in the film, especially in regards to relationships. So being able to do that research and, and have those resources to at least have a conversation with them really helped a lot. Roland Emmerich, the director, is a master of the disaster movie. Did you have a favorite scene to film with him? I did, and I, I won't give too much away, but it was when I had to make the decision. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's an incredible scene. Yeah, it was that, that switch where you're just having to see where, where are you going to put the faith? Mm. When are you going to, when, because the entire time he's like this straight level character. And at that point, he's like so confident in that. And at this point, he's like, I'm going to have the confidence to let go. Right. Put it into somebody else's hands. It's a really intense scene and, and I loved it. For anyone watching, have you got any tips for surviving a disaster movie? If you happen to find yourself in that situation, where should you go? High ground, in a mountain? What's the first thing you should be trying to do? Get a boat? I'll ask this. What is our chance of survival first? Is it like, is it, is it, is it 0% that we're going to survive or is there like a 1% chance that we could survive? Well, you know, you've got to think that all of these movies have these incredible stars on the planet that hopefully end up fixing things. So we have access to all of them. So we oh, can send have... every actor that's ever existed up into space. We have it at our disposal. Okay. So in regards to surviving, one thing I would say is, I'm always, I, I think just going underground. I just have a mm. thing about going underground in those underground bunkers that it's like, hey, go here. It could get destroyed, but can I keep the people around me safe as possible? Right. Yeah. Or you could be, you know, Elon or Patrick Bezos and just fly into space and just go away. Yeah, just avoid it. Just avoid it. Just, just be <laughs> like, I'm just going to find a new planet. That's fine. Exactly. <laughs> so did you have the opportunity to keep any props or souvenirs or a portion yeah. of the moon or anything? Yeah. Um, funny. Where is it? I shouldn't grab it. So this was something that was like super key to me. So this was on my literal last day of filming. It's a cork. Uh, they they had these bottles of champagne to say just thank you. And mm. I literally brought it home. And on the day of the premiere, I popped it open for the first time, uh, which is really cool to celebrate. I love that. And here's a question I ask every guest on the Sarah O'Connell show. Can you tell me a fun fact about you, something we may not know, a hobby, a party trick, something like that? I'm a triplet. Are oh, you really? Amazing. Yeah. I'm a triplet. I have an identical brother and a fraternal sister and uh, three older brothers as well. But yeah, I'm a, I'm a triplet. So you, you have a couple of stunt doubles if you ever need them. If we do need to. My brother, you know, he... He's one of those people that like, you know, gets like, could get a knee injury and he's just like hurt. You know what I mean? But uh, sure. <laughs> if he needs to, we could switch. We could switch. <laughs> That's fantastic. Can you tell me what you might be working on next? I know you finished filming The Grey Man. Have you got anything else coming up? If they do a sequel to Moonfall called Earth Jump, would you be up for that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love that title too, Earth Jump. That'd be great. Right? Um, it's the okay. logical next place for them to go. The moon has fallen, Earth needs to jump. It needs to jump, exactly. Yeah, it does. <laughs>
And so my final question, if you've got any messages for people watching the Sarah O'Connell show and your fans around the world, of course, Moonfall is out in cinemas on the 4th of February. Oh, yeah. Yo, go see Moonfall and just have a blast. Like, sit down, especially in the time that we've just been in quarantine for like, like these last two years. Just go out and have fun and, you know, just uh, enjoy. Uh, enjoy the work that, you know, we all did and what Roland did. And i um, super excited for technically for, for Friday. And I can't wait to see it again. I've seen it. I loved it. Amy Parker, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a pleasure talking to you. You too. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you to everybody watching at home. Be sure to share, subscribe, give this video a big thumbs up and leave lots of lovely comments. I'll see you all again soon for another episode of the Sarah O'Connell Show. Bye. Awesome. Thank you so much.